One thing that a lot of my students have problems with is NTFS file permissions. And this is actually a very critical thing because we'll use NTFS file permissions both in Windows and in Windows Server. And we'll use that to secure access to files and folders. And we use it way more in server, but it's available in Windows 10. And it works pretty much the exact same way. So I want to walk through configuring some uh, file and folder level permissions using NTFS. Now, I've created a folder. Open up File Explorer here. Uh, I've created a folder on my C drive. And I've called this folder data. So let's, and I've just created the folder and we haven't put anything in it yet and there's no uh, configuration been done on it. Let's take a look and see what our default permissions are. So I'm going to right click on data and go to properties. And then I'm going to find permissions under security. Now these are the users or groups that have access to the system and these are the permissions that they have. So let's talk about the ones that are available. Authenticated users basically means anybody who has successfully logged into the system. And anyone who is an authenticated user has modify, read, and execute, list folder contents, read, write, and the special permissions is currently unchecked. They do not have full control. So let's talk about what these are. And these are basic permissions. There are also special permissions and advanced settings that we'll look at in a little bit. So write permission means you have the permission to write. Now this is a folder. So the write permission means they have, authenticated users have the right to put data into this folder. They can read data from this folder. They can list folder contents. They can see what's inside of it. They can read and execute. Now, read does not equal read and execute. Read and execute means you can actually run something. So if you've got a script or a program in there, you can execute. If you just have read permissions but not execute, you can't do anything with, you can't execute a script or a program or something like that. Modify basically means you can do anything. So you can read, write, you can change, you can delete. Modify is what gives you pretty much all control except for the ability to change permissions. So modify means you can do anything with the objects, you just can't change permissions on the objects. That's full control. Now notice all of these are allowed, none of these are denied. It's important, we're going to come back to that. The system is a specialized group from the operating system. Administrators is administrators. That's pretty straightforward. Now a little key here, you cannot lock an administrator out of anything. You can take away their permissions, but administrators always have a special option called take ownership. And so they can take ownership of your files and folders and then give themselves permission to those. So you may take their permissions away, but they can always get them back. And then a user is really anybody who's a user. Now notice all of these are grayed out and I don't have the option to change anything. That's because these are inherited permissions. Now if I click my edit option here, it's going to give me some additional options. So I'm going to come down to users because that's the one that had the least. And you see here I can add other permissions. So I can take my users up to modify. I'm going to go ahead and apply that and hit OK because I want you to see the difference here. These modify, by the way, includes right, so that's why that popped up. These are dark, which means they are explicit. And an explicit permission is a permission I set on this object. The ones that are in gray are an inherited permission. Inherited permissions, this inherited from its parent object. So since this data folder is on the C drive, everything that's inherited here got inherited from farther up the chain, which in this case would be the C drive. All right, let's edit. I want to show you one more thing here. I'm going to go back to my users. Now, because these are inherited permissions, I can remove them. Now, if I try to remove my, apply, or my, let me try that again. Because this is an explicit permission, there we go, I can remove it. If I try to remove my inherited permissions, notice that it's not actually taking them away, no matter how much I click on them. All right, let's deal with one other thing here while we're here, and that is the idea of a deny. 
you almost never, I mean, there are a few situations where you will deny people access, but it's really, really rare. In general, don't deny access. If you don't want somebody to access it, just don't give them permission. If it's not explicitly allowed, it's implicitly denied anyway. Think about it like you're trying to go to a movie. You go to a movie, you walk up to the person at the front counter, <clears throat> you hand them our ticket, that ticket says, yes, you are allowed to get in. What happens if you try to walk in without a ticket? Well, they're going to stop you. You're not going to be able to get in. And that's because you are not explicitly allowed. Therefore, you are implicitly denied. Same thing happens here. If someone is not explicitly allowed, they are implicitly denied. So you almost never have to deny. A deny is a very weird override. And so there are special situations where you're going to want to use that, where you would, you know, allow them access to everything except maybe this one thing. And that's where you might want to use a deny. But in general, if you don't have to use a deny, don't. Especially when we deny folders, that tends to come back down the road and bite us because we'll forget that there was a deny and an explicit deny overrides an implicit or inherited allow. So that will sometimes come back and bite us a little bit later on. So best practice, don't deny. Just don't allow. If you don't allow, they don't have access. Okay, so now that I've reset this back to normal, let me go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to move into the data folder, and I'm going to create another folder here. And I'm going to create another folder, and we're going to call this one General Access. Okay, I'm going to open up my General Access, or right-click on my General Access and go to Properties. And in my General Access, I'm going to want everybody to have access to it. So I'm going to go to security and remember all of these permissions that were uh, allowed. I'm going to go to my users and for my users, I want them to have modify and write permissions. So I'm just going to edit and I'm going to give them modify. Whoops. Let me go to users and I'm going to give users modify permissions and modify. Remember includes write. Modify actually includes everything below it. I'm going to hit apply and OK. All right, so now anybody who has access uh, who has access to the system is going to have access to the general access folder. Now let me create a new folder, and I'm going to call this one special access. And for this, I want to restrict access. So specifically, I don't want. I created a new user in here named George, and I don't want George to have access to my special access folder. So I'm going to right click and go to properties and security. Now George is going to be an authenticated user. So even though he's not uh, in this group, he's going to be part of users, which is going to give him read, write, execute. He's going to be part of authenticated users as long as he logs in, which means he's going to have modify permissions. Now, permissions are cumulative. So let's say Let's do this. I'm going to edit these and I'm going to add George. And check name, make sure I've got George correct. Yes, okay. And so I'm going to give George read permissions only. So I'm going to uncheck, oops, I unchecked the wrong one. I'm going to uncheck read or check read, uncheck everything else. Okay, apply and okay. Now the problem is that George, even though I'm giving him read permissions, because he is part of users, he's still going to have read and execute and list folder contents. And if he logs into the system, he's going to be an authenticated user, which means he's going to have modify. So just giving him read there doesn't work because permissions are cumulative. If you're part of more than one group, you get the cumulative permissions from all of it. Now, there are other funky things that come into play when we start accessing across the network, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to focus on our NTFS permissions. So, if I want George to only have read, I have to stop permissions inheritance because all of these are inherited and I need to stop that. And the way I do that is I go to Advanced 
And in advanced, I have an option here to disable inheritance. So <clears throat> I'm going to click on disable inheritance. And this is going to give me a question. I do not like this question. And the question is, what do you want to do with the currently inherited permissions? You have two options. Convert inherited permissions to explicit permissions or remove. I wish this option went away because you really don't want to hit remove. If you hit remove, it takes away all the permissions, including the permissions for the operating system, which means the operating system can't access its own files, and that's bad. So what we do is we convert instead of remove. Now, all of a sudden, these are no longer inherited. And you'll see here, inherited from none. They are now explicit permissions. So I'm going to hit apply to save everything. OK is going to take me back. And now notice all of these are black. They're bold, which means I can remove them. So I can edit. And for my authenticated users, I'm just going to remove my authenticated users. For my users, I'm going to remove that. Now I'm going to leave administrators and system because I want them to continue to have, I can't block administrators out anyway, but I really want the system to have access to it. My account, by the way, is an administrator account. So I'm going to get the administrator permissions, but George now is only going to get read permissions on this folder. And that's what I want to do. And notice I've done this without doing the deny. So let me apply and OK. And so now George only has read permissions on this folder. I'm going to close out of here for a minute because I want to show you something else on the general access. I'm going to right click on general access. I'm going to go to properties and security. And I'm going to go back to advanced. Now here you'll notice that we have inherited from this inherited from column and here the users have modified permission and that's not inherited that's explicit authenticated users we have modified permission inherited from the C drive standard users we have read and execute inherited from the C drive so this shows me where these permissions come from these also show me what it applies to it applies to this folder all subfolders and all files that's the scope that by the way is something we set using advanced permissions so let me come back to my special access folder. I'm going to right click on my special access folder. I'm going to go to properties. I'm going to go back to my security and advanced. And I want to take a look at some of these special permissions. So I'm going to add a permission. So and select my principal and I'm going to pick George again just because you know he's handy. It's going to work better if I spell George correctly. Check name and hit OK. So this allows me to set whether this is an allow or deny. Remember, we use allow. We only use deny if we absolutely have to and if there's no other way around it. We have basic permissions. We also have show advanced permissions. And this is going to give us a whole bunch of other options. Now, most of the time, and by most of the time, I mean like 95% of the time, you're going to be just fine using basic permissions. But there are weird occasions where you want to do some specialty permissions here. And that's what all of these are. These are special permissions. So you can do full control. Traverse folder, execute file, list folder, read attributes, read extended attributes, create files and write data, create folders, append data, write attributes, write extended attributes. This gives you a lot of capability. Basic permissions are basically just a combination of these advanced permissions. So let me go to modify real quick and then go to advanced permissions and you'll show all of the advanced permissions that they now have. Let's go back to basic. I want to uncheck modify list folder contents, right? We're going to go down to read. And when we do show advanced permissions, we're going to see that read means list folder date, list folder read data, read attributes, read extended attributes, read permissions. So this gives you an idea of how you can get really, really detailed and fine grained in what you're doing. Now you can also set the scope and that's here. What does this apply to? Does it apply to this folder only? This folder, subfolders, and files? Well, you get the idea.
So you can pick what you want it to apply to. Now you can get really, really detailed. In general, save yourself the trouble. Do this the easy way, as easy as possible. If you can do it using basic permissions, do it using basic permissions. If you have to use extended permissions, then you can think about it almost the same way as you use a deny, right? You do basic permissions and only allow unless you absolutely have to do a deny and unless you have to do something crazy that is going to require extended permissions or advanced permissions. Okay, one more thing, and that is effective access. Now, remember I said permissions are cumulative. So if you have a user who's a member of multiple groups, and you're going to see this more with servers, but you will see it occasionally on workstations as well. If you have a user that's a member of multiple groups that uh, may have different permission settings in each group, you can see what they have by coming to the effective access. So I'm going to select a user, and my user is going to be George. Check that I spelled it right. Good, we found him. Hit OK. And I can view his effective access to this. And this shows me what he's going to be able to do. And I can do this by right-clicking on a folder or a file or something like that. And I can see exactly what he's going to have access to. And everything with an X he can't do. And this tells me what it's limited by. It's limited by file permissions. And this tells me what he can do. And this becomes a really great way for you to double-check and make sure that your permissions are accurate. All right. That's how we can manage NTFS permissions using or in Windows 10. Same thing works the exact same way in Windows Server as well. Remember the key rules. 95% of the time, you can do what you need to do using basic permissions. So use basic permissions. Don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. The other rule is don't deny unless you absolutely have to. Instead, just don't allow. And if you stick with those permissions or those ideas when you're setting permissions, just think about the inheritance, think about those rules for setting permissions. You should be able to get your permissions to do what you want it to do. And if you can't and you have to use those <coughs> advanced permissions or you have to deny permissions, that's okay. Those tools are available there for you to use. But if you can do it with basic permissions and if you can do it without denying permissions, that's the best solution.